Okay, this is the last part of the collections class, and it's a structure called a dictionary. It's unordered like a set, and like a set, it has uh, entries by uh, that have to be unique um, by the key, but each entry is actually a key-value pair. Uh, so you can look up the key, and it returns the value, and they're always associated with each other. Uh, the way you define a uh, dictionary, it shows, uh, for example, capitals, and you use um, curly braces like you do for a set, but it has these extra colons that separate the key and the value. So this is a key, and this is a value. This is a key, and that's a value. The keys are normally um, strings, uh, but the values can be any object type, uh, in, in, including very complex types. Um, so I've written in Python a demonstration of a lot of this, but we're going to look at the following features. So I'm just going to th go through them really fast. Um, you can look up a by key, just like you look up as a an array, but instead of passing a number, you pass the key value, and then it returns the value. You can set or change a key value. Um, if the key doesn't already exist, it will create it and then set it to this value. If the key already exists, it will change its value to this value. Um, so they show a couple examples that the length function works on it. So you give the dictionary to length and it returns how many key value pairs are in. And this is a little foreshadow of control structures. This actually runs through all the keys in capitals in a loop. So then uh, for each key that's in the capitals, you can uh, look up the value this way using index. So it'll print out the capital as the capital of this key. So this is what a for loop looks like, but we'll cover that in another chapter. It's important that dictionary like set is maintained in no particular order with respect to the keys. Uh, the first pair added uh, and the second pair added, when you print them out, it may not be in that order. Um, the, actually, the way this works uses an idea of hashing, which we're actually going to learn how this internally works and create our own hashes in Chapter 4. Uh, now, dictionaries have both methods and operators, so there's a couple tables to describe them. Here's the operators, the, uh, the index operator, which uh, can return a value or set a value. The end operator will test if a certain key is in the dictionary. And the delete operator will delete a key value pair uh, given the key. So you say delete the name of the dictionary and in square brackets put the key. And then there are some methods. You can, uh, given a dictionary, you can say dot keys returns a, a list uh, of all the keys. Dot values returns a list of all the values. Uh, dot items will return all the key value pairs inside of tuples inside of a list, and I'll show you a demonstration of that. Uh, now you can get values out by using the index operator. Uh, so you just, like this example here, you use index, the name of the dictionary index and your key, and it gets it. But the index operator, if the key doesn't exist, it will cause an error. Uh, and, and we'll show you that in a second. So get has, what it does is if it doesn't exist, it returns the none value. So you can check for that, for example, after you've called that to see if it returned none. Or you can use this form that has two arguments and you give it what value uh, you want to return if it doesn't find it. And I'll show you an example of that. And they just give you a place to, uh, to play with the code. Uh, so, but we're going to show you some actual code and we'll give you this file. So in pycharm, and when you start doing more complex work, it's useful to have it stored in a file. So if you make typos, it's easier to fix. You don't have to uh, type so much stuff in. You can build it up and test it as you go. So this is a Python file. When you're inside of a Python file and you add um, variables, the variables are loaded, uh, are part of that file, and a file is kind of like a module. So you can think of a file as a module level. Um, so here are some examples of dictionaries. This is a list of color values. So you look up the name of a color and it returns a tuple 
which is the percentage of red, green, and blue. So one would be 100% and zero would be none. So this gives you a bunch of mapping from uh, uh, names of colors to actual values. Here's a years at job I'm going to use in some examples. So the key Tom is associated with five years. Mary is associated with 11 years. And Sally is associated with one year. Uh, oh, uh, just a note, you can put uh, structures like this on multiple lines. Uh, usually if you're doing something where it's obvious to the compiler you're not done, you can then continue on another line. Uh, but in some cases you have to use a special symbol to say continue on the next line. And uh, So th then we have one more example, phone extension. A uh, key for David is his extension, and this one is an example out of the book. And for Brad, th that's his extension. So now I have a series of prints and I put an exit. This is a special command you can put in to, to exit the program at this point. So I can just load run part of it. So I run it up to here and you run by just saying right click, run the name of the file and it produces output down here. If you want to see your output gets very long and you want to see more of it, you can stretch this pane up and down like this. Or you can do what's called floating the pane. So you go over here and you say floating mode and it makes it a separate window. And I've made it really big, uh, but uh, normally it starts out smaller and you'd have to maximize it. And then you can put it back where it was by just uh, undo the floating, it goes back to where it was. Uh, so some little window management uh, techniques there for PY charm. So when we run it, uh, we're also showing the print statement. This is another option on the print statement, is you can supply more than one parameter to the print statement separated by commas. And what it print does, it prints each parameter out as a string, and then it puts a space between the parameters. So I can use this to put a label before it prints out the data for... So here it's looking up the green value, color values. So you'll see it prints out this tuple. Green is space and the tuple. Here it's printing out uh, what, how many years Tom is at the job. So it prints out Tom at job, then it looks up the uh, key to get the value, and then and then types out the word years. So it says Tom at job five years. Here's uh, Brad's extension, and since I'm inside of a single quote string, I have to use a backslash sequence to actually input a single quote, which I have to do because if I don't do that it thinks that that quote is the end of the string and it gives me an error here. Okay, so here this looks up the phone extension for Brad, so you can see how that works. Now let's go a little further. Um, so my next thing I do is uh, demonstrate how the index operator can change data. So Sally already exists, uh, where, here we are, Sally has one year on the job and so we're going to set her to two years. So we're going to have her flip over to another year. And then it's going to print out looking up that. So let's exit after that one. And then we'll run it. So you can see it's, a, and I have a comment between before each thing it does. So it changes years on job for Sally. And then it says Sally at job two years. So you can see the print statement for that. And then we exit. So the next thing we're going to do is look at, we looked at the method keys and values. So this is going to, years at job is going to print the keys and the values so you can see what that does. So we'll just move exit down here and run. So it says keys and values. So the keys uh, are Sally, Tom, and Mary. And the values are 2, 5, and 11. So that separates out the keys and values into a separate list. Um, okay, now uh, then we have uh, delete Mary. So we're going to delete Mary. So we say delete years at job in the key, and then we're going to print years at job, and you'll see it's deleted Mary. Uh, so you can see that Mary's gone here on the last one. Oh. Or delete Mary. So here Mary's gone and then after that I put the exit after and then we add Jose so this is a un, this key is doesn't exist in the current dictionary so it's going to create Jose and set his value to 1 and you can see here's Jose been added to the dictionary. 
So let's go down, look at items. Now what items does is it returns a list with all the keys and values, uh, but it puts each key and value inside of a tuple. So let's run this. And you can see that it puts a tuple, Sally, to Jose 1 and Tom 5. And by the way, this actually doesn't return an actual list. It returns a, what's called a generator. And this is actually the name of the generator. To actually get a list, uh, that, in fact, these up here with dictionary keys and values did the same thing, uh, you actually have to make it a list. So where it says print the items, I have to say list and, and put this whole thing in parentheses. So that takes the generator and converts it to a list. So if I run it again, you'll see it's, it's now a list. It doesn't say that uh, uh, object name in front. Okay, and the last thing is uh, it's going to uh, look at this get method. Now, this last one here where I get Mary, Mary, by the way, doesn't exist. So if I get Mary by using the index operator, it's going to cause an error. Uh, so I'm going to comment this one out for now. And by the way, comments are just a pound sign. And everything to the end of the line is commented. So what it's going to do is it's set years at job. And I'm going to remove this. That was a little extra thing. Okay, so I have uh, years at job, get Mary. So that, Mary doesn't exist. So because I don't have a second parameter, that will return the value none. And then this one will return the value unknown because I specify what to return if it doesn't find it. And this last one will cause an error, uh, which we aren't running yet. So let me run this first. Okay. And you can, you can see the items here. It returned. Oh, where are we? Oh, we have an exit up here. So let's move this down. Run it again. There we go. So we have uh, the first one, it returns none. And the next one, it returns unknown. Now let's uncomment this and look what's going on. Now first, you may not see the error at the bottom. Error messages come out through a separate process in the computer that's running asynchronously to this output. So you may see the output anywhere through it. And here it ended up in the middle here. So you can see it says file, and it has this line, and then it's intermixed with a valid output, and then it has this line. So when you get error messages while you're running, they could just be mixed in with your output if you're outputting to the console. Uh, so I know that's weird, but uh, that's just the way it works. And uh, so that's it on dictionaries. Uh, and next we'll cover input output and, and formatting prints.